Today we are talking about horizontal rule. Horizontal rule is a modest flow screen component, but it has a lot of symbolic importance, and I'll explain why. So we are looking at a flow screen. Uh, you can see a big image here. That's, that's a recent flow screen component called image button uh, or image FSC. Uh, and then right here is this red line. This red line goes halfway across the screen. You can argue, uh, and we'll probably win the argument that this is not a particularly good design, uh, and that's not what they pay me for. So the point that you should focus on here is that this line exists in the first place, that it exists at all, because you've never been able to do this in a flow before. Uh, and we're going to hit this button. If you astute observers will notice that that button is a little unusual itself. Uh, and you can see it on this one, we've got a couple more of these. So what's going on here? So we got this horizontal rule. This, these are actually slides from a Dreamforce session that I just did. And I'm gonna sort of build up this component. So this is all it takes to create a horizontal rule. Because you gotta, remember, gotta keep in mind that lightning components, although they seem fancy and confusing and they have weird things like this implements lightning available for flow screen. At the end of the day, you put some HTML in them and that HTML gets shown in your flow screen. So what I've done here is I've taken the HR browser tag, you know, the HTML and just stuck it in a component. And this is technically all you have to do. And keep that in mind because one of the things that I don't think people really appreciate enough about flow screen components is how you can take any HTML, any chunk of HTML, get it from a web designer, build it yourself, find it on a web page you really like, and you can basically turn that into a little building block that you can use on every flow screen as many times as you want, and you never, you never have to look at the HTML again. So we're going to be a little more uh, clever though like like if I if we just did this then it would not be red there would be no way to make it red so what we want to do is we want to add a little flare we want to let the person who is adding the horizontal rule set the color and set the size and thickness uh, so we want to we basically want to let them style this web web uh, web HTML now these days if you know much about CSS you know that you tend to use classes uh, and style sheets. It's been that way for a long time. There's very good reasons for that. But we're going to use an older technique. We're going to use some real uh, crazy pagan stuff. We're going to use the style property on the uh, HR uh, tag here. And uh, every HTML tag has one of these. And you can set the you can you can give feed these style properties some CSS, and the browser will follow your directives. So, what's really cool about this is that you can collect the CSS information at design time in the flow builder. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically creating a place to pull in uh, the style information into the HR tag. Uh, and so far, so we can expose this style text. Now that would be okay. Uh, and then I would add, add style text to the design file, but then I would have to, I would have to provide it in exactly the form the browser wants when I'm building my flow. And that's a little unfriendly. So what we'll do is, uh, is do it another way because what we want to do here is we want to let the flow builder the flow creator specify this and if you look on the right here you can see what it's what it act what this component actually looks like at design time we let the flow builder pick their values for these four things and that's one that's kind of one of the ways you could do this now keep in mind that you don't have to expose all of this stuff you could simply hard code in purple and you'd have a purple horizontal rule. And then you could have the people building the flows could simply select the, the purple horizontal rule and they wouldn't have to fill this stuff out. They wouldn't have to think about margins. They wouldn't have to think about pixels. Uh, so, and you can do both. You can provide, you can, you can create one that has a lot of flexibility and, and another one that's very easy to use. So, 
The next thing we do is we, to, to allow the flow designer to add those four values, we create four attributes. And this should look pretty familiar to anyone who's worked with lightning components. Uh, but as I mentioned, this is gonna give me four different strings and that's not what the HR tag down here expects. What does the HR tag expects? Well, to show you that, I uh, can go into the browser. So let's actually go back to our horizontal rule. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to inspect the underlying HTML. So I'm going to select inspect, and then we get into the kind of scary world. And I'm going to collect the little pointer selector, and that makes it easy to select exactly what I want to see. So you can see over here on the left, I there I go. So I've selected, I clicked on the, on the horizontal rule, and over here it shows me exactly the HTML. And you can see that the style property has been filled with a bunch of styling information. It's got semicolons, it's got colons, the stuff's all munched together. The browser has no trouble with this though, and you can see this is all great. So what we need to do is we need to convert the four values that the person building the flow provided, and we need to convert that to this down here. And let me show this. Let me show this a little, a little closer. So this is this is that close up. So when you take the four values here, we need to convert them into this. This is uh, something that we will do in the Lightning Components JavaScript. It's just string manipulation. It's arguably the most basic thing you can do with JavaScript. Uh, and so to do that, first we have to create uh, a handler that kicks in every time we load this component. So every time you hit refresh, this component gets reloaded. And what we do is by putting in an init handler, that's a special kind of handler, and the Lightning environment looks for that and says, OK, you want me to run a function every time this thing initializes. And in this case, the function's also called init. So we go, where do we find this? Where do we find this? We, we find it in the controller, the JavaScript file that goes, that accompanies uh, a, a lightning component. So here's the init function. And you can see here, there's four of these component gets. So we are loading in the four values that were provided by the user. And then well, all we really do is we compose the style text by adding pieces of string together. Uh, and if you've never done this kind of string operation, when you're working with strings and you use the, the, the little plus sign here, the plus operator, it basically just glues them together. So by the time we're done with this line, this line, this line, and this line, we have assembled the string and we have it looking like this right here. And then the final thing we do is we store that string in the style text, which you'll, you may recall, the style text is what actually gets fed to the HR. So, that, so now we have our pipeline. We collect the values into the attributes, we combine them into a string in the JavaScript controller, and we give them, feed them back into the markup to go into the HR. And this is all done right before the browser is given the HTML. So by the time the browser is given the HTML to the flow screen, it's all where it needs to be. Uh, now, this is uh, the underlying CSS. If, you don't, if you're not familiar with things like border width and border color, and how to specify pixels and why this needs a PX. It, you know, it's very, it's actually really easy to learn about this stuff. I learned most of what I know by simply going to free web pages like this one. And there's a lot of examples and tools and it's very mature stuff. It doesn't change anymore. Uh, so uh, it's easy to pick up and you might want to experiment with it because it's like incredibly powerful. The only thing that's comparable to the rush of power that you get when you figure out CSS is the rush of power that you got when you figured out HTML in the first place. Uh, and so let's move on. So let me show you, let me demonstrate uh, how we can 
how we can tweak this. So here is that horizontal rule, and I'm going to change it to green, and I'm going to set the thickness in pixels to 10. This is the amount of space on the right margin. So if we make this uh, smaller, the line's going to get longer, and then uh, vertical margin pixels. Let's set this to 20. And that's basically the spacing uh, above and below the horizontal rule. So let's now save this and let's bring it up in the debugger. And there is my modified horizontal rule. And you can see this is a this is much different. And if I set the set this to zero, this will go all the way across the screen. And you can create as much spacing as you want and make it as thick or as thin as you want. And you can have multiple ones of these on the same page. So uh, so the takeaway is first of all, this is available in the usual place, uh, the unofficial flow site uh, for download. Uh, link should be available wherever. Uh, this video is run. And the other thing to take away is you can do a lot with HTML. It's almost becoming a forgotten art because only professionals actually dip down uh, below the square spaces and the mediums and the word presses to actually manipulate it by hand. But uh, if you've got the will to do that, you can do create some amazing assets uh, to use in your flow screens. So thank you very much.